Hello there, and thanks for joining me. I'm Curl Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the Grunge Brush Pack. Now, right now, I'm just using a single layer document. This is a stock image of a steampunk guy, and I wanna use it to test out my brushes. I'm going to choose Duplicate Active Layer. There's only one layer here, and I'll go to Launch Particle Shop, and I'm gonna zoom in a bit, let's say to 150%, and we'll wanna select the Grunge Brush Pack over here on the right, and then below that are all the different brushes within the pack. Let's go ahead and start with abrasive. I'm gonna select white for my color. You can find your color picker over here on the left and you can pin it to keep it from going away by clicking the pin here. Now abrasive is kind of an interesting blender brush. It kind of adds paint and blends. You can control the count or the amount of speckles that come out of your brush using the count option here. So if you want there to be fewer bigger speckles or smaller finer speckles, you have control over that. Now these particular brushes are using dynamic speckle technology. So what that means is there's a lot of little dots of paint or a lot of little speckles that dance and move around and you get a lot of really interesting random patterns. These dynamic speckles are very versatile and you can do a lot of things with them. I'm gonna do some undos. You can also clear all of your brush strokes by clicking on this reset button here. You can also paint with abrasive. You could select a color and you can of course paint different colors. It kind of blends while you're painting. You can also turn on glow for nearly all of these brushes. If you check glow, then it's going to give you this nice glowing light effect. Now generally this works better if you choose a darker color and then it doesn't build up to white so fast. The next brush is cracked. I'm gonna select black for my color. I'm gonna make kind of a bigger brush. The keyboard shortcut I'm using here is Control and Alt and I'm tapping and dragging with my pen to resize my brush on the fly. And there's kind of a magic size for this brush that works really well. I'm gonna go ahead and click on reset tool and it resets it to eight, and that tends to work really well. If you go too small with your brush, then you end up getting these little dots, and that still might be the effect that you want. Maybe you want these dots to build up as cracks. Maybe you want a really big brush, and you want really big, branchy effects like this. It's all up to you, but if you want the default setting for any brush, you can always click on Reset Tool. You can also use lighter pressure to get thinner, more transparent little root shapes here, or crack shapes, or you can press hard to get big, thick ones that build up. And of course, you can use other colors if you wanted to create kind of a vine effect. Let's take a look at another way we can use these brushes. Maybe we want to fill in this text that says grunge with a grungy background for each letter. Let's take a look at how to do that. I've created a layer of text here, regular text layer. We'll need to convert that text layer into a regular layer by right clicking on it and then choosing rasterize type. And then with duplicate active layer selected in particle shop, we'll choose launch particle shop. Then we can simply just choose some brushes and paint over this area. I'm going to choose grainy. The grainy gives you this nice grainy kind of broken up texture. Now again, you have control over the count. So if you want a smaller, less dense grain, you can do that. Or if you want a lot of grain, you can turn it all the way up. Let's try hen scratch. This works well if you tap with it or draw with it. And it gives you nice little random squiggly lines. If I do a stroke here, you can see what that's doing. If I use a smaller brush, I get finer little squiggles. If I use a bigger brush, I get bigger, broader squiggles. And I can control a lot of that with my pen pressure as well. Let's move on to the next brush, which is modeled. I'm gonna select some different colors here. This works really well to do little patches of different colors. Smaller brush gives you smaller patches. Bigger brush gives you bigger patches. And again, you can vary that with your pen pressure. Gives it a nice kind of moldy look. And then we'll move on to the rough brush. Rough brush gives you this nice rough texture. Smaller brush tends to work a little bit better and you wanna tap with this brush. But you could also paint strokes with it as well. It works well for that, but tapping gives you these nice rough patterns. I'm tapping pretty firmly with my stylus. Once we have our letters filled in, we can go ahead and click on save. We want to save only the brush strokes. We'll click on OK. We can hold down Control, click on the grunge text, and then on that particle shop layer, we can just add a mask. And there you go. We have a nice grungy piece of text in the background. Let's explore the remaining brushes. I'm going to go back to my single layer document here, and I'm going to launch particle shop. The next brush is Scribbles, and Scribbles gives you these nice random scribbles. If your brush is big, you get big scribbles. If it's small, you get fine little scribbles. Depending on the size of your canvas, there's kind of a magic brush size, so you may have to experiment with this slider until you find the size that you want. 
Pen pressure also controls the size of the scribbles, so if you press down hard, you get kind of shorter, thicker scribbles, and if you press down light, you get thinner, smaller ones. You can select some light scribbles and kind of paint over this, and it gives it almost an aged film effect. And don't forget, you can play with the count to control the count, and that gives you kind of a more fuzzy effect here. Turn it down to zero, and it goes back to doing just individual lines. The next brush we'll look at is Speckles, and Speckles gives you some interesting little floating dots or bubbles. It also kind of blends with the background color that you're painting over. Again, smaller brush, smaller Speckles, bigger brush, bigger Speckles. When this is set to Glow, you get some interesting light results here. If you turn off Glow, it tends to be more opaque and just covers things up, and you get more of a paper grain texture. Again, you can control the count. So if you want a lot of dense speckles, you can do that. Or if you want just a few, you can turn it down lower. The next brush is Splatter. Let's pick a color here. We can just tap with this to create big splatters of color, like so. Again, we could set this to Glow, and you get this nice glowing effect. We'll move on to Spongy. Spongy is an interesting brush that gives you kind of a soft, spongy texture for the background, so this might work really well just to add a little bit of subtle grunge and weathering and aging to the background of something. You can very easily put that in here, like so. Even put in some lighter areas using a light color, just to help age this a little bit. So there you go, that's a tutorial on how to use the grunge pack for Particle Shop. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video, and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more Particle Shop tutorials like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.